Happy Friday, folks. It's the real Captain Kirk here. We're live from One Bethlehem Plaza here in downtown Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, here on the uh, 12th of July, a day early here. Again, uh, we recently spoke at a, a new data Wall Street financial services type conference in uh, Manhattan here uh, not so long ago here, and they had a shark tank type competition. And again, uh, weather trends won. So they were fascinated with what we do with year ahead weather, but not only predicting the weather, you know, by week, by mile, out a year, everywhere on earth. That's 32 million spots, but uh, predicting thousands of seasonal items and how it Im impacts the uh, equity performance, uh, you name it, crops, uh, things you buy every day. So again, it was uh, good to win the pretend Shark Tank conference. The big news here this week was obviously Hurricane Barrel making landfall. Uh, again, the major city would be Houston, just to the southwest was the landfall, but uh, again, did a number on uh, Texas here. Uh, only Cat 1, but uh, spawned 203 tornado warnings. Uh, we'll see if all of those get confirmed, but uh, from Texas to New Hampshire. Um, that's second only to Hurricane Ivan. Ivan did about 213 tornadoes. Uh, so again, a lot of tornadoes with this event. Houston area flooding, they had uh, 12, 15 inches again. They don't need more rain, but uh, again, more flooding down in Houston. Peak wind gust was about 107 mile per hour, and uh, Houston actually had 89 mile per hour wind. So again, it was a impactful little Category 1 here, so um, uh, not to be messed with. Uh, 2.7 million homes lost power. Uh, speaking of the severe weather front here, again, uh, the past couple weeks here, we've added uh, 69 tornadoes, 197 hail events, 947 wind events. So again, a lot of this was due to um, Hurricane uh, Barrel. Uh, tornadoes are still trending the most in 13 years, so that's the big category. And actually, uh, we'll show our insurance video here that we produced uh, uh, late last year, again, for predicting the very active 2024 season. And again, it's predicted a lot of these flooding, severe weather, and hurricanes. And unfortunately, we're not done with hurricanes. Look at the three-day severe weather outlook here for this weekend. Again, uh, not a lot of activity here today. Again, some minimal activity across the country. Uh, peaks uh, picks up a bit here this weekend across the northern plains so and then uh, again across the east coast here the next couple weeks looks to be rather stormy here look at last week world summer here now this is part uh, history and part forecast here since we're a day early here but week ending 13 july saturday tomorrow looks like here in the u.s we're going to end up about 2.8 warmer than last year number one warmest in 39 years so a very warm week 12 uh, percent drier than last year 19 tries in 39 years uh, a little bit warmer up there, obviously, in Canada. Uh, UK was the cold spot. Again, they were actually the coolest in four years and actually below average. Wet continues to be the theme here. So with this emerging La Nina and, again, the Tonga volcano from a couple years ago just pumped so much atmospheric moisture uh, up high in the atmosphere. And it's going to precipitate out for the next three, four, five, who knows, years, you know, upwards of uh, 10 years uh, impacting uh, global precipitation patterns here. One thing that's on the move here a bit is this uh, Bermuda High here. It's uh, getting a little closer to the east coast here, and the conveyor belt of moisture fetch from the tropics. Uh, kind of going to keep that dust at bay for, across Africa, but uh, again, very stormy and soggy here with a southeast humid flow for the east coast here. So the next couple weeks looks, uh, again, they need it in the southeast with all the drought conditions, but uh, stormy is going to be the theme here across the southeast. If we look at this week here, week ending the 20th of July, um, here in the U.S., 1.1 uh, warmer than last year, fifth warmest in 39 years, so much above average temperatures here, but continued cool trends here. They have not had a lot of heat uh, in the north-central U.S. In fact, the least hot days in nine and five years in Minneapolis, for example, has had zero 90-degree days, so it's uh, been very cool, generally theme uh, in the north-central U.S., and that will continue here this week. Rainfall is uh, down 17%, uh, still 17th water, so above average, but again, rain where we need it there in the parts of the southeast plagued uh, Again, dry. Some of the crops just really drying up. Uh, not a huge crop area, uh, but uh, in the southeast uh, compared to the U.S. Corn Belt, that's doing very, very well. If we look at uh, next week here again, week uh, last week, full week of July here again, continue to see that uh, bullseye of cold weather there right in the central U.S. Corn Belt region. So again, the great growing conditions here for the corn. It got a lot of rain here and ample soil moisture, so they'll take it. Uh, again, critical phase here of uh, pollinating. Again, so no extreme heat here for the heartland of the U.S. U.S. overall actually 0.6 cooler than last year, coolest in three years, 12th, warmest in 39 years, so above average, but the heat continues there in the northwest part of the country. Rainfall again way up here again with this conveyor belt of moisture for the south, southeast, 52% wet in last year, wet is in four years, ninth, wet is in 39 years. So again, very, very stormy here along the east coast the next couple weeks. Again, uh, not typically entirely a severe weather pattern, but with that cool weather coming from the northwest and clashing with this warm, humid air, certainly could have some... Um, thunderstorm activity that could approach severe limits. And we just aggregate these two week, two week world trends here for the through the 27th of July. Again, the coolness central hot spot will be the Pacific Northwest, western half of the country. Uh, still continued cool there in the UK and parts of Germany and uh, preset maps uh, inset left. 
total rainfall here again uh, for the two week period here. So three, four, five, six inches of rain here across the, the deep south, southeast, east coast. Uh, so again, that'll be the stormy spot here this week. Thought we'd end here with a video we produced again uh, late last year, again for some of our insurance clients and uh, big Fortune 500 clients predicting all this 2024 severe weather. And again, we just line up climate statistics and cycles and everything was screaming active tornadoes and active hurricanes and it's already starting. So uh, we'll let you enjoy the video here of um, two minutes of what we uh, projected here for 2024 and sadly we're not done. We've got a, a lot of hurricanes here to contend with in the core season, August, September, October. So folks, have a great week and uh, we'll talk to you this time next week. Weather Trends International is projecting a much more disastrous year in 2024 that will have major implications for the insurance industry. 500 plus clients already know what's coming both in terms of the weather and exactly how it will impact their businesses through January 2025. NOAA says 2023 was a bad year with $28 billion disasters, but the $93 billion in damages was actually 27% below average and the least in four years. That's about to change in 2024. With a hurricane season more like 2017 and 2020, floods more like 2019 and 1993, severe weather and tornadoes like 2011, and severe winter cold and storms more like 2013, 2014. Weather Trends 500 plus clients in insurance, financial services, retail, seasonal suppliers, pharma, and agriculture know what's coming week by week out a year across 32 million locations worldwide. Let's hear what Chuck Grom, a longtime client, has to say. In addition to weather trends overall forecast, they do an excellent job forecasting the hurricanes and not just the number of storms, but by region. And that's important for, for the, co the couple companies we cover, Home Depot and Lowe's in particular, who can benefit during periods of disruption. And so we take that information, his regional analysis, and allocate it to store overlap, which helps us say who we think can benefit more um, from the storms and more importantly, where those storms are gonna hit. The reason we use weather trends versus some of the other uh, weather predictors out there is because Bill's been right. And Bill's been right for 10 years, 10, 15 years, and he's right six months out, 12 months out, doesn't change his forecast, sticks to it. Um, and as a result, he's been critical to our, to our work. AI can't do what we do a year ahead with predictive business weather analytics that don't change once issued. Spring 2024, widespread severe weather impact, and it's starting early. December 2024, the start of winter-related damage claims going into 2025. Add it all up, $286 billion in damage risk in 2024, the most in seven years. Are you ready? Let's talk.